Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about tool changes in Luban. Now, when you do tool changes in Luban, it's a lot different than when you do tool changes anywhere else because Luban is very, very limited. So, based on that note, let's go over here to the CNC generator. This is basically here where you edit all your files or anything that you're going to bring into Luban. Let's just do something basic just to give you a rough idea how it works in here. So let's start with some text. We'll click on the text here and we'll cut out the snap maker. So we'll click on the snap maker text here and it brings you up some information over here. This move command tells you where the center of this particular object is located at. This doesn't even say that it's in the center. So if we change these to 0.0, .0 and 0, 0.0, that moves this right to the dead center of your drawing. So that's about how we want it. That's the size that we want it. That's what we want it to say, the font and all that. We're good to go with that one. So now we need something else. So let's go to... Let's draw, how about, let's draw a oval around it. So we'll start here in the center somewhere and we'll just kind of do something like this. Now we got an oval. Go back over here, select your select tool. Come back up over here, select our shape. We want to center this one also. Put 0.0, .0 on each one of these. That moves this right to the dead center. And if you want to see your words on top of here, you can move this. Since you've only got two objects here, you can move this to the back. Right click on it and select send to back. Now you can see everything. Okay, so now we want to do some editing where we can carve with the tools. Or I should say we should put some tool paths on here. So we're going to go ahead and click our process button. Now that we're on our process button, tab here I should say, you have some options. Since with the tool pass you can only do one tool at a time in Luban, what we can do is block these out one at a time. So we want to figure out which one you want to cut first. Which one do you want to cut first? Let's cut the words first just for the sake of argument. So we'll block out the shape. So you can't see the shape now, so the only thing here is just the words. So now on the words, I think we wanna do a V-bit carve. So we're gonna use the V-bit. I think we wanna do it on the path. Let's make sure we select our object first. Select the V-bit. We wanna do on the path. Let's only do a half a millimeter deep. Your step down's on half a millimeter, so that means it's just gonna jump straight down to, to the very bottom of the depth and cut in one pass. Your jog height is when it gets done cutting, it lifts up and goes to the next cut. It lifts up that distance right there. That's your clearance height between cuts. That's very important that that is a positive number. This is the height of when it gets done with the job and it runs up above it. So basically we want to come down here to where our speed, feeds and speeds are. Here we're going to use the V-bit on this. So we don't need to be cruising through this really fast. 600 is probably good enough. A plunge of 600 is probably good enough. So what we will do is we will come down here and we will click our generate G-code. That just created the tool pass for this, and then we will load it into our workspace. Okay, now we got it in our workspace, but we're not done yet because we want to oval around there as well. But we want to do that with a different tool. So let's go ahead and delete this out of our workspace here. Go back to your drawing. Go up here, hide your, or unhide your shape, 
and hide your text. So now we just got the shape here. And let's go with a, let's use a larger bit this time than what you've got up here. So we'll go click this button here and we want a 3 8 diameter, I'm sorry, not 3 8 a 3 millimeter diameter flat end mill. This is the diameter of the cut, not the shaft. It is the actual blade width. And the blade width on that flat end mill is 3.17 millimeters, which is an eighth inch. And then the point angle is 180 degrees. That's what you want for a flat end mill, at least according to their settings on here. So we'll just leave it at that. Make sure we select our thing here before we start changing all these. Make sure all our settings are still right. We're good. We want to be on the path. Let's cut the outside here at two millimeters. No, you know what? Let's let's do it at one millimeter. And we'll do a step down of a half. So that'll do two passes around. Still the same jog heights down here. Except this one we can crank up a little bit more. Let's go to 800. And our plunge speed, we'll slow that down a little bit because we got a bigger bit. You don't want to jam a bigger bit into there. So we'll cut that in half, say 300. We will generate our G-code, and then we will load our G-code into our workspace. Okay, now you can delete this. Here is your two drawings that you have, that you just made, that you want to cut out of here. So first one we want to do is we want to do our etching for, or I mean our text first. So we will highlight this one. And then we will load it to our workspace. There it is. Now, let's connect to our SnapMaker. I'm going to do this through the Wi-Fi because this is going to take just a, a minute or two to cut. So it's going to be real quick. So let's connect. When you get connected, if you haven't already acknowledged it, then acknowledge it. I've already connected to mine several times, so I don't have to re-acknowledge. So now I am hooked on to my SnapMaker. Time to go over here to the SnapMaker machine and um, set the bit up. So first bit we're going to use is going to be the V bit. Okay, now if you can still hear me, we're going to grab our V bit. Here's our V bit. We're going to take our V bit. We're going to take our eighth inch collet. We're going to take the nut for it. Make sure when you put your collet in the nut that you put it in all the way and it snaps in. Just like that. We're going to put this nut up onto the machine here. Don't screw it up tight, just screw it up enough to where you can get your tip in. You want to have a good portion of your tip in, but enough sticking out that you can accomplish your tip, your cut there. We'll tighten this up. Now what we'll do is we'll get in here and we will line up our tool with our piece of wood here. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to move this down. So I'm gonna to go to my Z axis and I'm gonna move the head down here and I'm going to line this up. Okay, I think I want to cut that about... 
about right in there. It would be the center, I would assume so. As far as I'm concerned, that's good enough for this demonstration. Now, I have a two thousandths feeler gauge, like a piece of one. So I'm just going to stick that down there, and then I am going to slowly bring the tip down to that to where it barely touches it. Okay, right there. So I'm going to click on my set work origin. Okay, take my feeler gauge out. Make sure all my clamps are tight. I'm going to double check them just to make sure. I'm going to close the door to my snack maker cabinet. Okay, now that we've got that lined up on there, we're going to cut this because uh, that's going to be our work origin right here. So now we want to make sure we're in the center. I'm looking at it on the machine. We're good to go there. So I do believe I am ready to run. I'll set the other camera up here so we can watch it run. Time to cut. We're going to hit cut. Time to cut. We're going to hit cut. Okay, now that that's done, we can go ahead and do our tool change and set up for our next program here. So, we'll delete this file here. Let's load up our next program. And that's going to be this circle here. So, we're going to highlight that one. We're going to say load to workspace. There it is. Now, we need to set our work origin and load our tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the tool down some because only the Z height has changed right now. I'm still basically in the same spot where my start is, just the Z height is up. So I'm going to lower this down here so I can work with it a little better so it's not so far up in the air. Okay, now I got that loaded. I'm going to turn the other video on and show you how I change that and set that up. OK, 
Okay. Now, I'm gonna undo this tool. Take out our V bit. tighten her up here and then just like before we're going to set up for that spot where we can cut in the same area so I want to set the height here so I'm gonna flip up my little band again and then I'm going to go in here and lower my Z height okay and I can move it down a little farther here Moving it down until it grabs on to this. Okay, now I've grabbed onto it. I'm going to say that's going to be the origin. Now we are all set with that. Close up my door here on my snap maker cabinet. And then we will start the next one by hitting run just like as in before. This time I'm going to let this video run. that's done let's pull that out and that's how you uh, do two tool changes in Luban now like I said before Luban is very limited I will be doing another video and show you how to do tool changes in Fusion 360 Thanks for watching.